Welcome to another episode of Raul's World of Sense. I am Raul. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Dofer A174 joystick controller right here in the center. Uh, we're going to be discussing a few basics about this module and uh, a little bit later looking at some demonstrations and examples of how you can integrate uh, this special type of controller. Um, but first, let's t uh, talk a little bit about some of the basics on how this works. Now, the A174 is going to output two control voltages via this joystick control. One voltage is going to be generated when you move in the up-down direction, and one voltage is going to be generated when you move in the left-right direction. Now, there are two LEDs for each axis of the controller, that will indicate your positive or negative voltages at the corresponding outputs here. So let me kind of demonstrate that with the Y movement moving up and down. So right there you can see that I'm getting a positive voltage at my output right there. And if I move it down, you can see that the negative sort of LED has now lit up. Now if I move over in the right position, you can see the positive LED has lit at the X output. And if I move it over to the left, you can see that the negative LED has lit to that corresponding output. Now, there are also two voltage offset controls here in the center that are gonna allow you to set the zero setting. Um, ideally, your zero setting should kind of be somewhere in the middle, but there may be some applications where you'd prefer zero to be at the top or far right, or you'd prefer zero to be at the bottom or far left, or of course, anywhere in between those two. Um, now, this module here is going to actually open up a lot of possibilities for manual control. Uh, some pretty straightforward things are mentioned in the uh, A174 manual on the Dofer website, such as you know adjusting filter cutoff, um, you can adjust resonance on certain filters, um, you can do things like pitch bend on your A110 right over here. Um, you can also adjust the uh, rate of your uh, modulation VCO if you wanted to. Uh, you can use it with VCAs. Uh, and there are many, many other applications, some of them which we'll show in some of the future video segments, and some we'll just kind of be discussing in detail. Um, and really, really, you can kind of apply it in any other way that you can possibly think of as well. Not just in the A100 system, but also in other Eurorack modules uh, as well. So very, very useful, very, very fun module right here. Um, now, the total range of the joystick is actually 7 volts. Uh, so 7 uh, all the way, I guess, range would be the best way to say it. Um, in the all the way up position, Y is going to be outputting 3.5 uh, in the positive direction, and then all the way down, it's going to be outputting minus 3.5. Uh, so that's going to apply in the uh, X axis as well. So over here, you're looking at plus 3.5. Over here, you're looking at minus 3.5. Um, I thought it would be useful uh, to take a look at that really quick. I don't want to take up too much time with that, but I wanted you to see that uh, those voltages and how you reflect them um, and how you can use them then a little bit later. So I'm going to patch my Y output voltage over to my Dave Jones Design O tool. So we can kind of take a look at that. And if you take a look over there, you can see. Now I'm in the center, but I'm not quite hitting zero. So this is kind of where, if I wanted to be really, really precise, I could go in here and adjust uh, my offset here. So my top number over there is my uh, Y. So I'm just kind of adjusting it ever so slightly until I get it as close to zero as possible. That's actually not bad. So for my Y axis, I'm gonna stick with that right there. Now let me adjust my X just a little bit. See if I can get it as close to zero as I can. 
Uh, that's pretty close. Okay. So now that we have them kind of both pretty close to zero, or well, within a, let's see, a tenth, one hundredth, uh, yeah, within a couple of decimal places there, um, now we can kind of sort of demonstrate how the behavior of this is going to work. Because you have, in addition to the up-down movement and the left-right movement, you also have everything in between. So you have all these different diagonal positions that will generate different voltages for you. Uh, so let's talk about those. Now, going all the way up, you can see over in the O tool that I'm around 3.5 right there in that top number. You can see that. And then all the way in the down position, I'm at minus 3.5. That's pretty straightforward. Now, with the X, if I go all the way to the right, then I'm at around 3.5. And if I'm all the way over at the left, I'm at minus 3.5. But now if I go up in the diagonal direction, like up here, I should be at about positive 3.5 for both voltages. And then in the down or diagonal right position, my Y has changed to minus 3.5 and my X stays at plus 3.5. If I jump over to this position, then I have a minus 3.5 for my Y and a minus 3.5 for my X. And then up at the top, I would have minus 3.5 for the X axis of the joystick and approximately plus 3.5 for the Y axis. Um, now there is a jumper inside of here where you can kind of create sort of a plateau uh, around the center uh, position that will basically uh, not allow the voltage to change in that short little range. Um, I kind of tried it out, and I, while I actually preferred that type of sound, just subjective, I guess, for me, um, I kept it in a kind of default position anyway, just for the, the basics video. I may change it up a little bit later, um, but just wanted you to to, to know that that option is out there. And it's very easy just to remove those two little jumpers. And there's uh, instructions on their location on the PCB inside the A174. And uh, so it's pretty easy just to take them out if you ever feel like you need to. Um, one important note that I wanted to make uh, that's also in the manual too uh, is there's a, a little mention of the spring in here. So I wanted to mention that. Um, if you sort of hold it down and then let it go, it sort of jumps back to the center position. See, any, from any direction right there. Um, there's also a note in there that uh, discusses sort of if you remove the spring for either one of these, uh, it basically is uh, not necessarily serviceable. Uh, now, I don't know all of the details on that. Uh, I haven't read anything about people modifying theirs. Uh, I can imagine if the spring wasn't there, uh, you would have more kind of fluid movement um, and it wouldn't kind of jump back to the center. But uh, not that I'm encouraging you to do that, uh, but uh, at any rate, just wanted to mention it because it's there on the page. Uh, and that, for the most part, is the basics on the A174. It's a fairly straightforward module, but there's gonna be a lot of fun applications that we're gonna be looking at going a little bit further down the road. So I hope that you found this useful and I hope that you will join us in the next Rouse World of Sense video uh, where we're gonna be looking at one or two demos of this module. So thank you very much for watching and keep on patching out there.